Returning to my Coin Lady channel, I am pleased to see you again. All the large bank partnerships have failed to produce price action, which is something that XRP holders are likely sick of hearing about. However, I will provide you with undeniable evidence in this video as to why this has not occurred. I don't understand why the price action hasn't reflected the significance of these major announcements and partnerships. Why isn't the market responding to that? A cursory examination reveals that banks are still the primary target of Ripple's. Medico was a recent addition to the Ripple.com website, and Wrath of Kahneman did publish an article about it. BBVA and DZ Bank are now part of the customer. Chiron is a planet. There has been no clear explanation of who is participating. There are three obvious prongs to solutions, payments, custody, and stablecoin. I find it intriguing that banks are once again being discussed, and it's true that they have always been discussed. Many individuals simply began to disregard banks, which is the main issue. Large financial institutions were of little concern to them. The fact that Bitcoin maxis and others who claimed XRP was a banker's coin are suddenly seeing institutionalization of the space is really amusing, given that the entire landscape is moving away from retail. Banker coin status is XRP. Who am I to deal with XRP? Everyone is now expressing their warm welcome to BlackRock. We are targeting institutional buyers for our Bitcoin. We would want to have institutions present here. But guess who we'll meet if we travel through time? You might be surprised to learn who first encouraged bankers to enter the field. There were ripples. The object of their gaze, you ask? In this case, it was XRP. Could it be said that XRP and Ripple are leading the charge to institutionalize digital assets, and that XRP stands to gain substantially from this emerging trend? The landscape is beginning to change, after all. It isn't, in my opinion. The way things have changed is just so comical, but I don't believe it's too far-fetched to say that. But let's give more consideration to all these links, as I've suggested before. Since Medico is the primary topic here, let's speak about it. So, let's start with the most important one, Medico Harmonized. In December of 2023, Credit Suisse announced a major partnership with Medico, also known as Ripple, and Rule Match, a leading player in the security services industry. The partnership will allow banks and security firms to trade cryptocurrencies at market-beating speeds, using tech from Medico and Nasdaq. BBVA, another major player, also announced a partnership in December of 2023. All of these partnerships are focused on new stages of crypto asset tokenization, private banking, and the overall institutionalization of crypto. We're entirely devoted to that. And now boom, once again in December, Zodiac Care. The top custodian of digital assets, supported by SBI and Standard Chartered Northern Trust, made yet another major announcement. Once more. What is their main emphasis? A lot more than simply custody. Trading, institutional flows of digital assets, and tokenization are their main areas of attention. HSBC is another major player in this space, tokenized securities are intriguing. Plus, DZ Bank deserves our congratulations. By the way, have you been keeping up with the dates? We're about to launch our institutional digital asset custody product, which is driven by Medico Harmonize. There will be no less than six major announcements in the two months beginning in November 2023. Another key player, Legion Steiner Private Bank, VP Bank, was one of Medico's five partnerships in the previous nine months, which occurred in April of 2023. Next up, in February, Medico will be launching a tokenization platform in partnership with Deca Bank, a 105-year-old German bank. Because it is attracting so many institutions and is so huge, I keep coming back to how important it is to understand Medico and its impact on Ripple. Rest assured, this is but a portion of the overall picture. That is completely out of the question. This picture and this riddle, if you will, are also connected to the hundreds of organizations that have been using Ripple for a long time. Additionally, over here, good morning crypto community, evidence for this breaking Ripple displays IDs for dozens of banks situated in China and Hong Kong. Only the Philippines could issue IDs before this modification. 
We can examine the complete breakdown now. Here are the IDs for each bank. Each of these banks is a major player in the Hong Kong banking industry. China is also a part of this. The story doesn't end there, does it? Significant participants. Can you tell me what this means? Well, if we look at the paperwork, it's just banks and IDs, nothing too out of the ordinary. We aren't seeing any indication of collaborations or anything similar. However, in the long run, it may cause ripples to announce that, oh my, guess what? Our clients include all of them. And if I'm being totally forthright with you all, it wouldn't shock me in the least, when we examine Ripple, its long-standing agenda, and the solutions surrounding Ripple, it becomes irrelevant whether or not they intend to bring down these institutions. Their goal is to collaborate with them. Theirs would be the best interest, just like JP Morgan's and everyone else on this list, wouldn't it? And for a long time, the general consensus was that JP Morgan had no interest in Ripple. What gives? Who would want to collaborate with Ripple? It would be very advantageous for them, in fact. Why? Well, for starters, due to ISO 2002, too, even smaller banks are required to innovate. If they adopt a strategy similar to Ripple payments, for instance, they will suddenly find themselves competing with larger banks, regardless of their size or client base. Big banks could end up eating their lunch. Remember the 1700 contracts, sometimes known as NDAs? It would be to their advantage to take advantage of Ripple payments as well. We've discussed this before, but this further proves the possibilities. Additionally, this information is derived from 1700 contracts that were lost in the litigation. There are roughly 1,700 non-disclosure agreements NDAs, involving Ripple and XRP and other related matters. It is unknown to us how many of those are partnerships. We are unaware of the exact quantity of users or whatever it is. But that is of great importance. But I ask again, what good is any of this? At what point will it cause the value of XRP to rise? That will be addressed shortly. My video would not have been seen without you. Thank you for watching my channel and for subscribing. I will see you later.